Scenes like that are keeping 56 million households up at night. It's called Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, and it's become one of the biggest ever Netflix hits. The company is saying that the 10-part dramatization based on real events has streamed for nearly 500 million, 500 million hours since just two weeks ago. Dahmer was known as the Milwaukee cannibal. Not catchy, but he was a legendary, infamous, bad guy, a murderer who dismembered and often ate 17 men and boys that we know about between 1978 and 1991. Now, before Dahmer was beaten to death in prison, journalist Nancy Glass spoke to the serial killer, spent a lot of time with him and his family, and was one of the few given that kind of access, and the last to interview him before he was killed. Here's part of her interview. I had uh, these obsessive uh, desires and, and uh, thoughts wanting to control them, to, uh, I don't know how to put it, uh, possess them permanently. And that's why you killed them. Right. Right. Not because I was angry with them, not because I hated them, but because I wanted to keep them with me. Nancy Glass joins us now. Thank you so much for doing this. Great to be here. One, what do you make of the success of a series about him now? Well, it's very interesting. You know, I think America's obsession with true crime has something to do with the fact that reality, nothing is more horrible, fascinating, interesting, and sometimes even humorous as actual reality. You couldn't script that. When he would be with you and you would be speaking to him, yeah. his motivation. What did you read in terms of how authentic it was, in terms of he believed it? Well, it's interesting you should say that, and I know you have spoken to serial killers. Here's the thing. That, Odd bond that we share. Yes, yes it is. Ahead. And we, we discussed that. But the fact is, while he said, oh, I'm sorry, I wish I hadn't done this, I should have had the death penalty, he was a psychopath. So who knows if he really meant it? And you really have to see things in that context because very often people say to me, he said he was sorry. Now, in the first few episodes of this, yeah. there is a sympathetic portrait made of him. Nancy hasn't seen it yet, but she will. I don't want to spoil it, but you know how it ends. <laughs> um, one aspect of it is the cannibalism. Now, yeah. I want you to listen to another clip of Nancy's interview with uh, Jeffrey Dahmer about the cannibalism. Listen. I was uh, branching out, that's when the cannibalism started, eating of the heart and uh, the arm muscle. It was a way of uh, making me feel that uh, they were a part of me. It, it, for, at first it was just curiosity and then it became compulsive. You talk to him about this more, obviously. Yes. And what was your takeaway about what it was about for him? Well, again, you know, there's an interesting thing that happened in his childhood. His father told me that his mother didn't allow anyone to touch him except to change his diaper or hold him for a photograph. And so he never really attached to anyone. He told me he had no friends. And then what happened was he wanted someone to be with him, to touch him. And he felt he didn't want them, well, he wanted to touch them. He didn't want to be touched back because he didn't like the fact that he had, that he was a homosexual. He didn't like it. So he felt, how do I get these people to be part of me? And part of that for him was cannibalism. Now, they call that in criminology corporeal integration yeah. where you don't eat because of the taste as horrible as it is to discuss but that you want that person in you as if you want something from them that you can only get that way what would that right. have been for him 
Uh, his fantasies were all about total domination, total possession. He would sit with a photograph of his victim because he would photograph his victims to keep them. He would keep their bones. He kept 10 skulls. It all made it that it was part of him. But here's something else that's very interesting about him. You know, he confessed like that when he was caught. 160 page confession. He detailed every single thing he did to every single victim but he didn't remember their names. They were not people to him. They were just objects. So one more uh, clip I want to go to about uh, Dahmer, uh, about the use of acid, mummified yeah. head. Listen to this. I tried to uh, keep the person alive by inducing a zombie-like state. Um, by uh, injecting... Uh, First, uh, dilute acid solution into their brain or uh, hot water. And uh, it never did completely work. I kept the, uh, the mummified uh, head and skull of one of the victims in uh, a, a carrying case in my locker at work. Were you almost flaunting it? Yes, but that's how strong the compulsion was. That's how bizarre the, the desire was. I wanted to keep something of, of the person with me. The ultimate intrigue is that he looks like us. Yes. But he is an absolute monster. And that's really the big fascination is it could be anybody because they look like anyone else. And that's the most terrifying thing about him. If he was like Charles Manson, you would say, oh, I could see that coming a mile away. But because he was so normal, he was able to get away with so much. It's what made him so terrifying, I think. But let me tell you something. One of the people that he, a 13-year-old boy, who was, he had drilled a hole in his head and poured in acid because he wanted to zombify him, the kid got away, ran away, ran into the street bleeding with a towel on. A neighbor called the police. The police found the boy, and Jeffrey Dahmer was such a skilled liar. He said... Here's a picture of him posing nude for me. He was my lover, and the police gave him back. Mm -hmm. And then he killed him. Uh, the guy was absolutely a liar, which I think is yeah. something you're going to have to keep in mind when people watch this in yes. terms of the reckoning. Um, this is fascinating stuff. I would love to talk to you again after you watch it, by the way, because okay. it'll be an interesting thing. Hey, it's not but, a documentary, right? But it is not a documentary. Right. It's not even close. Um, but... It is amazing how it's gripped the nation. Uh, it really yeah. has. Nancy Glass, nobody got the access you did. Thank you so much for sharing the stories with us. Of course.